What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek. And today we're talking about Power Automate, we're talking about expressions, and we're now talking about the workflow function actions. So action is the ability to pass in the name of an action and then get out some, piece, some pieces of information about that action. And when we say action, what we're actually talking about are sort of steps or actions inside Flow itself. So let's take a look at that. So I'm in Power Automate here, uh, and what I've actually got is I've got a couple of um, a couple of a trigger and an action or a step in my workflow in my flow um, that looks at um, my CDS environment. So uh, we're saying in my CDS environment when a when an account is updated, we are then going to get the record of that account, and we're passing in that account ID from that first step. So this first bit is a trigger, and then the next step is an action. And what we are going to do then is we are going to look at the workflow functions actions to get a piece of information about this. So if I click into uh, here, so this is just a compose action here, and I go across to expressions, I can scroll down until we get to workflow functions. Uh, also, referencing functions is what it's called. Um, it's called. It's called two different things. It's called workflow functions in the documentation, but called referencing functions inside of Power Automate. So it's a little bit confusing. Um, so here we have um, an action here that's called uh, actions, and it's got a single parameter of action name. So the description says enables an expression to derive its value from other JSON name and and value pairs or the output of the runtime action. That makes complete sense to me. Um, I don't know about you. Um, so I, I didn't really understand exactly what that means, but all that's basically saying is we can um, pass in the name of an action inside of the flow uh, and then do some uh, do some work on it. So if I click actions, it'll go there. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the name of the, uh, the action that we have which is just a get record. So you'll kind of notice that I've got a underscore here, uh, but there is no underscore inside of here. This is because this is the name of that action. It's not the name of the step, it's the name of the action that it does. Um, so that's where this can kind of get a little bit confusing. So if I click OK, it will go into there. And we'll test this and we'll show you what it looks like. So I'm not going to perform trigger action. I've already done it. I'm just going to uh, run this flow uh, based on a previous, uh, previously successful run or previous run. So this is uh, doing the thing. So uh, when the record is updated, we got that bit. Um, this uh, this is what we have for um, the inputs and the outputs. So in this step, we have the inputs, which are these, these steps that we're asking for. We have the outputs. And then if I expand this, this is a list of all the details from this get record action. Inside this workflow functions, we actually have this. So this is the JSON representation of that action. So the name of the action is get record, which is what we set it was in here. Uh, and what this is doing is this is going to tell us a bunch of information about that specific action that we're calling. So uh, in this instance, it's telling us the name, uh, the inputs, we got the method, which is a get method, the path. Um, you know, we can get loads of information out of here. Uh, we also, it also contains like the body as well. So we can get the body of the information in here as well. <coughs> Sorry. Um, you know, the body of the information in here as well. Uh, so we, we basically get a lot of information by using this get record function. So it's a little bit like the um, like the dynamic content inside of um, inside of, of flow, but um, inside of a flow. But what this allows us to do is get a bit more information in here. But what's what's great about this is that we can drill down further and get more information from what we have. So for instance, if I go to, if I go back to my um, my workflow functions here, my compose step, if I have this actions get record, I could actually put dot name, uh, name on the end of this and update it. 
And what that will do is that is saying that what we want to do is we want to get the ref we want to get the details of this get action, which is this step here. But what we want to do is bring back the parameter of name. So if I test this now, and just save and test once again, we can actually see that it's brought back this uh, this get record. So that's the name of the action itself. Again, we can drill down further as well. So we could do um, outputs, and then we could put a body, and then we could put a status, uh, and we can update, and we can test this again. Um, and we just have to wait for this run out. Uh, there's no, I guess there is no status in the the body. Okay. Well, let's use one I used earlier, which I think was uh, created on. Created on. I think it was the one I used earlier. So test this. Let's probably my keyboard buffer anyway. If this doesn't work, there we go. And that's bringing back this. So the the problem before is it wasn't bringing back the right. Um, it didn't have the right parameter there. I thought status reason or status will be uh, something that was in there. Apparently, it wasn't in there. So this is the created on date, uh, which is in there. Again, if I just uh, go back this step, and if I remove all these, so all this is saying is look down into the outputs part of the get get record function, then look into the body of the outputs, and then find this uh, this record or this. Um, you know this this field, uh, and then return that. If I remove these and we go back and test this one more time, we can kind of see what we're talking about here. So we get in the action. So here are the inputs. So we're scrolling down. So this is the name, and then we go into the inputs of this, and then we go uh, down, scroll down, and then we get to the outputs of this. So we've got things like status code, headers, and then we get to the body, and this is where we were. So we're in, we're in the outputs, we're in the body, and then we get access to all of these pieces of information, all these field names and stuff like that. So continue scrolling down, so we get to um, create a, uh, create by and stuff like that. We have basically all the details that we get usually via that. Um, via dynamic content, but we can get them in here as well. But the, the brilliant of it is we can get other information about this action as well. So we can get the, the details of the API path and we can get um, find the method and, and other things. So yeah, this is quite powerful because it allows you to drill down information, information a bit better than using dynamic content. So what do you guys think? Is this something that you use at the moment? Is this something you'll use in the future? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video please like and please share it with your friends always appreciated if you're not already please subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll see you next time